fifth year in the NFL, both coaching in Baltimore and here in Miami. He's had just one losing season in all those years, a winning percentage of over 70%. PDAC's film has more on this remarkable coach with a remarkable record. Miller has won his Super Bowl. The Miami Dolphins have defeated the Washington Redskins. Now the clock, there's a gun. And Miami has won Super Bowl seven. The final score, Miami 14 and Washington seven. Sometimes Shula shows such intensity, such concentration on the moment, on the next play, on the next week, that it's hard to realize he's been around for 20 years. But he has. Two victories short of 200 in the regular season. Several Super Bowls. Of course, an undefeated season. How do you keep going? How do you maintain the level that we see both in you and in your team week after week over this period? Well, first of all, I still enjoy doing what I'm doing. And uh, the minute that I stop enjoying it, that I'm going to look for something else to do. There's no other feeling that you could ever have that would come close to, to the, the excitement and the experiences that you have once that ball is kicked off, the decision making, and then afterwards reliving the game and thinking about uh, some of the great things and some of the things that, that weren't too great that particular day. What about the creative side of Don Shula? The flea flicker last year against San Diego. David Woodley caught a touchdown pass in the opener against the Jets this year. What do you think of these things? Well, we haven't made up any of those lately. <laughs> We've had trouble getting the ball into the end zone. So whether it's a gimmick or whether it's just good old-fashioned sound football, we got to get back doing some things offensively that, that'll get the ball into the end zone. And occasionally the gimmick will work. And of course it worked in the San Diego game right before halftime. And it was a great, great play. And it inspired us for the second half. And it worked in the first game against the Jets. But I imagine that uh, they'll be working a little bit about that throw back to the quarterback pass so we uh, don't expect the gimmicks to win a football game we got to get it done with uh, good old-fashioned football and then if there's a place for a trick play then we want to have that ready to go too we've talked about some of the great moments uh, I know one of the most painful things that's happened to you here in Miami is uh, finding out that several of your prominent players uh, ended up with drug problems how do you think back on that now well, it really is uh, disappointing when you hear something like this happen to former players. And uh, you're right, it has happened here probably more than in other places. Uh, Miami is, is a pretty tough town. Uh, and uh, this is one of the places in the country that uh, you see more drugs and there are more temptations for players here than in other parts of the country. And as a coach, you only have a certain amount of time to deal with these players, to try to influence their lives, both on and off the football field. And, I'm just sad for the players that have had their lives ruined, and I hope that some of the other people that are, that are looking and watching can learn something from the experience, the negative experience of these other players. I think Coach Don Shula, like a lot of teams, uh, a lot of coaches around the league, got caught uh, sort of unawares of the drug problem. It was unfortunate that a player, a former player of his, Don Reese, had to go to Sports Illustrated with his story. But at least the National Football League has got its head out of the sand. They realize that there is perhaps a significant problem. They are willing to help the players, and they are also willing to help them without the players suffering any repercussions. Left. It has to be tough in Miami. Plus, about it being a tough town, but He's as, right. as far as drugs coming in there.